थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर ज्वाइनिंग एस एम पिट्रोडा एंड मैं फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन टू यू हाउ डू यू थिंक द न्याय यात्रा द मैनिफेस्टो एंड द कैंपेन हैज गॉन फॉर द कांग्रेस एंड फॉर राहुल गांधी एंड हैज राहुल गांधी नाउ प्रेजेंटेड अ क्रेडिबल ऑल्टरनेटिव टू द करंट गवर्नमेंट वेल राहुल गांधी अकॉर्डिंग टू मी वॉज ऑलवेज a credible i won't say alternative but a leader it is not about an alternative to modi or to anybody else it is about the idea of india i think this election is not about modi versus who or rahul versus who it is more about what kind of a nation you want to build i mean i don't understand why people are dragging this into a personality cult or a conflict it is not a presidential election it is basically a parliamentary election the tradition is you select your mps and your mps will select why are we all especially media making this a presidential election it's not fair to our constitution it is not fair to our voters and i don't think you all are doing service by having that kind of a mindset so going back to yatra at huge impact both yatras and manifesto is for you to judge it depends on what you believe in if you believe in an in india in india that is democratic that is rooted in justice liberty freedom equality then the manifesto may make sense if you don't believe in all of these things to you manifesto will not make sense if you believe in you know more tax breaks to rich if you believe in creating more billionaires and keeping everybody else poor this manifesto will not make sense mm. so it depends on where you are coming from Okay, talking about caste census, unlimited quotas, wealth redistribution plan. The ruling party says this looks more like a communist plan. How do you respond to it? It is about. Why don't you look at this more as lifting large number of poor out of poverty, respecting people who have not been respected, not in the mainstream. that's not leftist that's not communist that's human all these labels don't make sense you know people say anything without any responsibility see i find in present discourse people including prime minister says all kinds of nonsense which makes no sense at all but they can get away with it and media gives them all the you know platform to amplify their voice it's just not fair in a poor country like india not to take care of large number of people who are at the bottom of the economic pyramid and i know what it means to poor people i was poor at one time and india gave me an opportunity to get free education today if i want to get my masters in physics that i got 60 years ago it would be very expensive i won't be able to afford if i was that poor but india gave me education at absolutely no cost now is that communist all the iit graduates who are making millions world over and making contribution they graduated with very little tuition is that communist i mean what are you all talking about i don't understand so we need free education as much as possible we need free health service earlier we were not ready now we have fair amount of foreign exchange reserve when i used to work for rajiv gandhi we had very little foreign exchange reserve now we are sitting there with 600 billion dollar worth of foreign exchange reserve It didn't happen overnight it took 50 years to get there believe me it didn't happen in last 10 years don't be under wrong impression all these iit graduates and all the technology innovations and digital india did not happen in last 10 years it has blood and sweat 
of people who worked for 40, 50 years. Nations don't get built in 10 years. Nations get built in several decades. So it's, you know, you have to look at a larger picture. But I am so concerned with the present discourse. And I see on and off conversation like this on television. It's all tutu me me. It's all by people who have no depth, who have never done anything in their life. And they are making judgment on all kinds of people. In addition, you have a prime minister who wants to take credit for everything. Space shuttle, it is prime minister's work. Digital India, it is prime minister's work. Payment, it is prime minister's work. Shame that you are quick to take that much credit for the work that people of India have done. I am puzzled. Okay, why these things go on unnoticed? Okay, now uh, according to you, does Rahul Gandhi have what it takes to be the prime minister of the country? Nobody has what it takes to be a prime minister. You become prime minister and you grow in a job. You grow in a job with support from people of India. You go in a job with support from scientists, engineers, politicians, bureaucrats, friends, family. When Rajiv Gandhi became prime minister, was he fit for a job? He was thrown into a situation. When Lal Bahadur Shastri became Prime Minister, was he fit for a job? You have to ask that question. People first need to have good character, good education, good understanding of the situation. You don't need to be a good orator. Believe me, it is not about debating society. It is about character. It's about values. It's about what you believe in. It's about compassion, empathy. Today, people think it is about debating society. You lie, you debate, you prove somebody wrong on the stage and everybody claps and say, oh, what a great leader. Shame. And this is going on world over. It's not just in India. That's why authoritarian regimes have become more visible world over. Because there is no substance. Leadership is all about character, values, wisdom. Leadership is not about scoring debating points. Where is the line between criticizing the government and criticizing the country? Oh, there's a big difference. There's a big difference. A country like India cannot be criticized by anybody. It has been around for thousands of years. It has history, heritage, unique in its own way. It has the diversity, resources. So no one can criticize India. It is just too big an idea. Okay, Because if you criticize here, it looks very different from somewhere else. India is the country where you have deserts on your west, lust, green jungles on your east. You have mountains in the north and you have hot tropical climate in the south. So forget about criticizing India. Now it comes to criticizing government. Of course you can criticize government. That's your job sometimes if you are in opposition in a democracy. But criticizing government should not be taken as an enemy of the government. You should have a big heart saying it's okay for you to criticize government. It's okay for you to have a conversation on a policy. And we listen to you. We may not agree with you. That's perfectly acceptable. But don't take it personally. All right. Now, uh, would you like to see Priyanka Gandhi Vadra or Robert Vadra contesting the elections? That is their option. I have nothing to do with it. Priyanka has to decide her own, you know, issue. Who am I to advise her? You know, people don't just take 
individual advice. They have to decide their own situation. It's a very personal decision. Has the India Alliance worked out as desired? All alliances have contradictions. All alliances require in a democratic system negotiations. You cannot compare alliances with an authoritarian regime. So if there is a little bit of crack in the alliance, TV media jumps it and says, oh, look at this alliance, they are fighting. Of course they are supposed to fight. That's what alliance is all about. That's what democracy is all about. You can't expect alliance to be dictatorial. By definition, alliance is more democratic, more accommodating, open to negotiations, conflict resolution. And by definition, dictatorial says, I'm the one guy and I'm going to decide for everybody and that's it. So there is no noise. And if you have noise, I'll throw you out. All right. Thank you, Mr. Sam Petroda, for talking to us and sharing your views. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.